Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. So, if you work in healthcare and healthcare finance, then you have to know about the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference because it is essentially the largest, most important conference for healthcare investors. This is where a lot of the money flows in healthcare happen. Now, it happens every January. It's in San Francisco, specifically at the Westin Hotel. And it's not a normal conference like you think of, like these things in Las Vegas. Okay, one, it's, all, it's really for investors. Okay, it's an investor conference. It is by invitation only. I'll leave a link in the show note to the official conference website. It's super sparse. It is, quote unquote, for the customers of JP Morgan, which there's not some big showroom floor with gobs of booths. It is, it's a little hush-hush. And so as a result, what really goes on there is all the unofficial meetings outside of the actual conference. Because this hotel is kind of small. You can't even fit a lot of people into it. And so what happens is, is that large health insurance carriers, uh, healthcare startups, healthcare technology firms, even not-for-profit hospitals, they all go out there and they meet with bankers and private equity firms and venture capitalist firms and they make lots of relationships and begin to sow the seeds of financial deals or investments. Now you might ask yourself, well why would a not-for-profit hospital go to one of these places? Well, not-for-profit hospitals are big in the debt market. So not-for-profit hospitals issue a lot of bonds, they issue a lot of debt, and they need investors to buy their debt, to buy their bonds. So they're going to talk and be present here strategically for the investment community, not from an equity standpoint, but really more from a bond standpoint. Now, we get tremendous insight into the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference from a recent a podcast from This Week Health, and you can watch it on YouTube. That's where I watched it. It's hosted by Bill Russell, and his guest for this episode was Rob Dimache, who is the former CFO of the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, UPMC, which is, of course, one of the largest, uh, most well-known hospital systems in America. They even have international locations of UPMC. So listen, first off, thank you to Bill Russell and thank you for Rob Dimache for sharing all their information about the J.P. Morgan Conference. So Rob Dimache was there. He took lots of notes and he shared his notes with listeners. It's awesome. I'm just going to give you a synopsis, but go watch the original or listen to the original podcast. It's fantastic. Okay, so uh, Rob Dimashi talks about look, the not-for-profit hospital systems that were there and included folks like his alma mater, UPMC, plus Intermountain Health, plus Common Spirit, which is one of the largest hospital systems in America, plus Sutter, which is the huge Northern California hospital system, Baylor Scott and White, Christiana, um, Advent, so huge hospital systems across the country. And interestingly, he said sort of the common thread across all these hospital systems were their strategic cost reduction, reduction initiatives, right? Because of the huge cost during COVID and the subsequent time, specifically for the agency nurses or the traveling nurses, right? And I've previously talked on A Healthcare Z in terms of how much these hospital systems had to pay on traveling nurses. It just sent their costs through the roof and it also caused them to have to then raise the pay of all their existing nurses and a lot of their other staff as well. So the hospitals are looking now at their costs and saying, okay, we have to do something about our overall cost structure because our labor costs have gone up so much. So, I'd, so Advent specifically is, is doing a $300 million cost reduction initiative and Common Spirit has a $2 billion cost reduction uh, initiative that's going to be phased in over like two or three years. So listen, from an overall healthcare cost standpoint, the reason why employers and brokers and consultants and folks that oftentimes watch A Healthcare Z, the reason why it's important for you to know about this, it's because the biggest chunk of your healthcare spend is for hospital spend. And so in order for your healthcare costs to go down, hospitals need to lower their own cost structure. So they don't just keep on passing on all their high costs to you. So it's actually positive news to hear that hospitals themselves realize that they have bloat that they need to reduce. I think that is a positive development. So I mean, I, Healthcare Z, we talk about all sorts of negative stuff here. 
I think that's positive. I think the fact that these major hospital systems are doing cost reduction initiatives on their end, I think is fantastic. Okay, now, interestingly, they said that they are, a lot of these major hospital systems are also talking about value-based care and ACO type value-based payment arrangements. So it's not just fee-for-service based on patient volume, but actually tying payments to things like outcomes or overall, um, you know, health as opposed to just paying for a procedure, paying for a test. Now, interestingly, these health plans are did not talk about starting, excuse me, these hospital systems did not talk about starting their own health insurance company. So that had been talked about previously, but not this year. There did not seem to be any initiatives for hospital systems to start their own health insurance companies, but they're looking to engage in payment arrangements with health insurance companies that are value-based and not on volume. Now, interestingly, one of the major hospital systems, Baylor, Scott & right here in Dallas said that they already get 15% of their revenue from these sort of value-based ACO type payment arrangements. Now I would argue at the end of the day that means Baylor Scott and White, Scott and White is 85% fee for service. What's that called? The vast majority of their revenue. And so Rob Dimashi talks about how these hospitals are having a hard time because they got one foot in the fee-for-service canoe, and they got another foot in the value-based payment canoe, and they're having a hard time figuring out like how to manage that, understandably so. Now, sort of conversely, at Rob Demache's old um, employer at UPMC, they own a health insurance company that has been selling insurance, health insurance in Western Pennsylvania for a long time. It is very well established. It is a dominant health insurance carrier in Western Pennsylvania. 50% of UPMC's revenue comes from premium from their health insurance plan. Their health insurance plan, with all of the financial challenges, you probably saw the headline about how the Cleveland Clinic lost billions of dollars, right? So the traditional fee-for-service hospital systems have been really struggling financially, whereas the health plan for UPMC actually made $600 million in profit last year, whereas the actual hospital clinical operations of UPMC lost $400 million last year. So it was actually the health plan that is cross-subsidizing the hospital shortcomings financially. So I would argue that the UPMC approach of actually owning a health plan is actually financially highly successful. So it's interesting that UPMC has been successful with it, but these other hospitals, they don't want to go in that direction. And Rob Dimache, I think, talks about why that is in just a little bit. Okay, so... Oh, and here it is. It's because he, he uh, Rob Dimitri is concerned because he hears a lot of talk from these hospital systems about their vision of moving towards value-based care and their vision of strategic cost reduction, but he said the real issue is going to be in the execution. That's a huge question mark in his mind. So are these big hospital systems actually going to be able to execute on their talk? And he says that, look, going from fee-for-service to value-based care is excruciatingly hard. It took um, UPMC 25 years to go to get to where they are now. And he said, look, if you're the CFO of a not-for-profit hospital system, that transition is incredibly difficult. That is super hard. And during this conversation, it's interesting because they talked about like the retirement of hospital CFO. So Rob Demache retired from UPMC. They talked about how the Intermountain CFO uh, had retired, a couple other CFOs had retired. So arguably, because a lot of these CFOs and a lot of these major hospital systems are advanced in their careers and age, and these initiatives are so difficult and take upwards of 25 years, you can see how there needs to be sort of a new crop of blood um, to come into these positions to have the longevity and the staying power and, and to a certain extent the vigor to be able to carry out these things. So to a certain extent, It'll be interesting to see if there actually, frankly, just needs to be a passing of the torch in not-for-profit hospital system leadership. Frankly, from baby boomers to Gen Xers. Like, I hate to say it, but to a certain extent, people in my generation need to be taking the torch and carrying this out. And, you know, I'm not trying to be an ageist here. Sure, there are baby boomers that can do this, but it'll be interesting to see if the torch passing is a prerequisite to actually making the execution happen. Okay, then finally on the carrier side, Rob Dimache was like, look, the carriers have basically decided that they are becoming providers, okay? So there's going to be increased competition from the health insurance carriers with the not-for-profit hospital systems because the carriers have just decided, we're gonna provide care. He referred to it as a fait accompli. It is a done deal, right? So 
it was stark in contrast in Rob Dimache's mind how the ho the insurance carriers have like decided it and they've executed on it, whereas the hospital systems are still kind of talking about it. And he says, look, the root of that is that because COVID was such a financial hit to the hospitals and it was so uh, all-consuming from an operational perspective, they just haven't had the money or the bandwidth to deal with anything else. Meanwhile, the insurance carriers had the time and the money during COVID to put in place all these provider advancement um, Provider initiatives of becoming a provider. This whole quote unquote pay vider idea. Well, the payers are becoming the providers, but the providers certainly have not become the payers nearly to the extent. So the not for profit hospital systems are way behind in uh, Mr. Dimache's uh, opinion. So I think that the take home points for employer sponsored health plans or just people that work in the healthcare ecosystem are that look, it's important to be aware of the JP Morgan conference. It's important to gather as much information from that conference by either going out there and just like, I mean, they, people literally like rent out tables. You got to pay like a thousand bucks an hour for a table uh, in a hotel just so you can have these meetings or, you know, dinners, et cetera, et cetera. So if you just want to like meet people, you just go out there. Don't wait for an invitation because you're not going to get one. And then if you're not going to go out there, then make sure that you're plugged into people that are going out there and they're talking about it and they're making videos and they're doing podcasts about it. And I think going forward, you're going to learn a lot more about the money flows in healthcare if you do that. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.